What's going on, YouTube? Hey everybody, welcome back to Camerville. Uh, today's a little different. Uh, I'll be reviewing the 77 millimeter Pentax, the 43 millimeter and the 31 today. And uh, yeah, those are really interesting numbers. Uh, first time I ever seen these lenses was back in 2005 when I started my photography class film, of course, back in Baltimore. And um, basically I remember buying my first manual camera and I would always see these Pentex lenses on the counter and they were always overly overpriced, of course. And um, ever since then, they, they are always around, you know, you, you see them here and there, you see people with Sony bodies that are using them as manual lenses. And people would always say that these lenses are actually legendary. <laughs> and I mean, that's fine. I, I pretty, I'm pretty sure that at one point in time, these particular lenses did make a mark in the photography world and uh, but today is 2017 but I think uh, these lenses came out around 1999 or 2001 around that time period or maybe even earlier I I really couldn't find much information on the date of release but it's around that ballpark so it's almost 20 years ago right <laughs> so it's a it's a really um, interesting lens I was thinking about comparing these lenses with uh, something like a Sigma is it's a fair because it's not <laughs> it's not a fair comparison but the pricing I know some of you guys will say but the pricing though I know the pricing is a little astronomical for for many of these uh, vintage lenses but today we'll end up uh, doing an outdoors test I don't have a model today um, people are busy today uh, unfortunately I am your model for today and I'll do some outdoor shooting I know these three lenses are different focal lengths so you're typically going to use these three um, lenses for different situations. 31 is kind of close to a 28, but I know people would think of it 35. And the 43 is kind of like a 50, but it's not a 50, it's a 43. It's a little weird. Number, the number convention is really, really weird on this lens. So, And 77, people are comparing with the 85 or something, or 84 or whatever. So it's a... It's a it's a little confusing in the beginning, but just bear with me. We'll, we'll definitely do some cross-examination on these lenses and image quality. And hopefully you guys enjoy uh, this review and uh, hopefully I do it justice. So let's begin. Hit it and impose. <laughs> so right now I'm using the 77 millimeter Pentax lens and I'm using a Wi-Fi app to uh, control the autofocus and I'm triggering the shutter as you can see, or you can hear. Ooh. So I'm already noticing that the the lens is pretty noisy actually. You can hear it. And um, let me take a photo of myself. So yeah, this is pretty cool. I actually like the app with the Pentax. So taking a look at the 31 and the 43, you can definitely right away tell the difference. Even though I try to compose myself in the image with my elbows on the edge and my head on top of the edge of the frame. So um, you get more of the background of the 31, of course. You get a bit more of the grass as you can see. Whereas um, the 43, you get a little of the a little bit of the grass and the bushes. Not a lot of sky, but 31, you get most of the sky. And uh, as you can see, the book is quite different. And to keep in mind, um, the 31 is actually 1.8 millimeters. So you are, so this is a bit uh, bigger, slightly bigger aperture. And the 43 is at 1.9. So that's something to remember. And if you can look closely at my glasses, you can definitely see that there's purple fringing going on. And that that's pretty common with these lenses. And so even you can see on my zippers and my, I believe my skin has some purple fringing as well. And that's some characteristic that you'll get with these uh, lenses. And so definitely let's take a little closer look at the bokeh. It's a little different from left to right, but uh, depends what you're looking for. If you want more of the background, get 30, get 31. If you just want sort of like a portrait like uh, with with a slight background, get 43. And if we can look at the 43 versus the 77. We could definitely see a real big difference with the, um, with the quality. So I tried to compose myself, but I missed the, the elbow. But this will give you a, a general idea of what you'll be getting if you do get a 77 millimeter lens. And so the book on the 77 is a 1.8, and is really I would say it's basically really um, really smooth on the 77 bokeh wise. But yes, this still will have purple fringing, of course, and um, 
definitely uh, you'll see purple fringe on my skin a bit and uh but if you are definitely doing strictly portrait photography and you want that bokeh you definitely get the 77 it has a nicer bokeh and if you want a bit more background in your image 43 is nice as well but if you really want to go extremely wide 31 is probably your best bet Woo! look at that bokeh Woo! Woo, it is sunny out here Woo, i'm baking why did i wear black <laughs> it is pretty hot out here guys so right now i'm doing a uh, still live photography with the 77 millimeter it's pretty uh not bad actually i actually enjoy this the autofocus is really um really uh responsive i don't really mind it too much and moving right along as you can see this is 31 versus 43 i try to take this picture of this flower um the 31 actually was pretty fast on autofocus. It, it was really snappy right off the bat, but as you can see, I was on a tripod and this is the result that I got. Wow, the 31 is actually really responsive, actually. Woo, even the flowers are moving. It could grab focus really quick. 31 is a bit wider, but the 43 is a bit, it's basically zoomed in a bit more. You, you will get mostly, as before, more, more background on the edges. Whereas the 43 will basically zoom in a bit more, so you get a little bit more detail. But I'm pretty sure if you own the 31, you get a little bit closer, you'll de definitely get more detail. But th this is the difference between both lenses when when uh, aiming at the same subject. Also, the 43 did uh, sort of uh, hunt a little bit with the autofocus. <laughs> That's something to keep in mind. The 31 is was much better autofocus. And so with that said, we could definitely check out the 77 versus the 43. And this is what it looks like. This is the 77. So the 77 may be a bit more crispier, maybe zoomed in, nicer bokeh, but in but I had issue with the autofocus. It definitely doesn't like moving slightly moving flowers. So this flower was moving left and right, it was definitely having autofocus issues. Ooh, that didn't sound good. Ooh, that didn't sound good at all. I don't know if you guys heard that or not. So basically, I was trying to find focus. I'm on a tripod and uh, I'm still aiming on the same flower. I'm just, I'm not even like doing anything too special, but the flower was like, moving just a little bit and the autofocus was kind of going haywire and it made a weird noise inside the lens it sounds really un uh pretty bad actually <laughs> and definitely the bokeh is much more nicer on the 77. oh yeah i forgot i have a flippy screen <laughs> I don't know why I'm bending over so much. I have a flippy screen. So after doing my bokeh test, I did my typical landscape test. I did my typical portrait test. And I just wanted you guys to know that these three lenses do share something really similar with one another. And let me say that, um, yeah, it's, it's okay. I mean, most of you guys already know what kind of problems these lenses do have. And so number one, they have chromatic aberration issues. And so even in my portrait test, I see blue fringing on my glasses and uh, some, some in my hair and my skin, but that's something you guys should already know about these old lenses. Um, landscape test, you would definitely get color fringing and uh, the edges of the roof where the sun is hitting and that's, that's all across the board. So don't get freaked out if you guys see color fringing because it's definitely there. Vignetting, yeah, vignetting, vignetting is there, distortion is kind of there. So don't worry about that. That's something that old vintage lenses do typically have, but you could definitely kind of remove it, but that's, for me, I like vignetting. For some of you guys that don't like vignetting in your photo and want to do it manually in a Lightroom or something, then that's something you should consider about. They do, number three, they are basically all noisy. Yeah, they're all noisy. And uh, if you're shooting in churches, you're shooting in like uh, weddings or something, you probably want to avoid this lens. This lens is going to make a lot of noise. And some of you guys might be like, not worry about it, but it's really noisy at times and I, uh, 
it kind of freaked me out when it lost focus. It was making some weird grinding noises. <laughs> like, it was like a broken machine or something, but that's just my experience. The pros in these um, lenses is basically, um, definitely the build quality. The build quality is really nice. It's, it's one of those build qualities that uh, I wish every single lens would incorporate in their build, but it's gonna be expensive because um, as you can see the lens hood, I mean the lens cap, the lens cap <laughs> has a green suede material in it, like something you find in a pool table. And that's really, really exquisite, really over the over the realm of things of photography, but that's something like uh, buying alligator slippers or something. So that's, uh, that's how uh, the build quality is on these lenses. Focus ring is really fast, really smooth. There's no play on it. It's really silky. You could just rotate with one finger. Aperturing is not bad. It's, it's pretty clicky. Um, if you want to go to automatic aperture where you want to control your aperture with the camera, you could definitely set it to, uh, I think it's a green letter at the aperture ring and it says to automatic. I mean, set it to A. So once you set your arm, uh, aperture in A, you could control the aperture through your DSLR. And that's a pretty cool feature to have on a Ventures lens. So, hey, that's pretty, uh, <laughs> that's something that you don't find all the time, of course, in um, manual focus lenses. And um, even though these three lenses do share these similarities, um, they do share slight differences. And so I'll go with the 31 millimeter. 31 millimeter, the 31 millimeter is actually really um, expensive actually, but it does have a lens hood. You cannot take it off. And basically it's really sharp and autofocus is uh, the probably the best one out of the bunch. The autofocus is um, the most accurate one and it is really responsive. And so there's no focus searching or anything like that. It just grabs onto your subject really, really quick. So you guys have issues with like focusing. Um, you want something really fast, get the 31 millimeter. I know, I know it's a thousand dollars. And so let's go over to the 43. 43 is the most compact one from the bunch. It does have a lens hood, but it's like really small. It's kind of like built in on the lens and it's not a problem because it's still compact like anything. Um, if there was anything that I could give more to the 43 is that the bokeh is better than the 31 millimeter in my own opinion. Um, I like the bokeh on the 43 over the 31. However, the autofocus is not as great as the 31. And so with that said, moving right along, um, the 77, 77 is really good. Uh, I like the bokeh on the 77, it's really nice. And uh, the thing that turned that turns me off of the 77 is the autofocus in. So I was only focusing on a flower, a little flower that's going left and right. It was having this little grinding issue, like it was pretty bad. I I thought I was breaking the lens by trying to focus on this little flower, but it turns out that the autofocus is really, uh, it's not made for sports. It's just made for static objects or something. I don't know. It just wasn't having it. It was giving me trouble. Um, the lens also has like this pop out like uh, lens hood. So you just gotta pull it out and it just pops out on your lens hood. That's pretty uh, That's pretty cool. Um, this 77, can, you could definitely do uh, professional work with it. Don't get me wrong. Um, you could definitely do quite a lot with this lens. I actually really like the 77, but the uh, autofocus kind of scared me off, but I realized I don't shoot a lot of moving subjects if I'm doing portraitures or I'm doing other things like shooting friends or family or whatnot. So it shouldn't be that bad, but if you are trying to follow like a kid or something, it might have issues and it might just grind a lot. So that's something you should take in consideration of. All three lenses are equally sharp. There's no, I couldn't find anything that can, that can like lure you guys to pick one from the other. They're all equally sharp. So don't get it twisted if you guys um, if you guys are like trying to figure out which one is better than one another, definitely the uh, definitely the only difference you will see if you're doing portrait photography is what I found out was on uh, the bokeh in the background. Um, you can see a lot of the blur in the background with the 77 over the other two lenses, but overall these two lenses are really nice, really well built, really noisy, have chromatic aberration, vignetting is there. Um, pricing is something that I won't, uh, I don't know, you know, <laughs> it's up to you guys. Uh, these lenses are for people that have, you know, that want to shoot manual focus photography, you know. You have the nostalgia back in the days, you like manual focusing, definitely pick it up. It's, it's definitely well worth the money, especially if you're owning like a 
I don't know, Sony bodies, you definitely could definitely take advantage of this uh, lens. And so for all you guys, I um, just want to thank you guys for watching this video and this review. And uh, I wanted to, to be quite honest, I actually would think about buying one of these lenses back in the days, but the, there was nothing on YouTube that I could find that um, would give me this type of result. So I had to do it myself. I really enjoy doing these reviews and whatnot. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Um, definitely give it a thumbs up if you do and thumbs down if you don't because I need to know if I'm doing a good job or not and uh, definitely um, leave a comment down below and thank you guys for watching I really had a great 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 time doing these reviews for you guys and I know some of you guys really hate these reviews because I'm hurting your feelings some of you guys are kind of like informed and some of you guys are kind of like hmm I need to take this in consideration <laughs> anyways guys thank you for watching and I guess I'll catch you guys in the next one all right, take care. Peace.